Is that clock right? No. Oh, okay, it's like the morning, that's way too early. Alright. Alright. Is it afternoon then? Happy Saturday, there we go. Happy Saturday, everyone. Good. I guess many didn't come to the breakfast clubs with me. Happy Saturday, everyone. Happy Saturday. Who's here is very sad to be in the house of the Lord. Raise your hand. It never works. It never works. It never works. I don't know why I even try. It never works. So I'm assuming we're all happy people there, right? Amen. Yeah. Good, good. Some of you guys. Right. We'll get you guys open later on. Now, I know some of you guys looking up here are like, who is this? Who is this? So, like, never been to Impact before. First time being Impact. Let me say, you guys, I've heard a lot about it. A lot about it. I know when uh, Julio and Boyce used to go over Chattanooga, used to hang out, bug out a lot of ways sometimes. And I'm glad you guys, the Lord has used you guys a lot to open up this multicultural church. Not seen a lot anymore. And I'm glad it's starting to grow. And I know God will, will inspire you guys and help you guys in your way. And uh, it's good to be with you guys again. For those of you who do not know me, my name is uh, Oscar Rodriguez, as it says in your little bulletin. But uh, I am in my last semester here in the School of Religion and Southern. So, uh, but pr praise the God, I'm going to be a preacher for you. Where? I don't know. He knows where. He knows where. He knows where. It was his calling, he's going to put me somewhere. That's all I know. In the meantime, I'm going to keep preaching the word of God to those who need it, just like me. Just like me. Um, my background a little bit, just a little shortly. I am born in the wonderful state of Texas. Cowboy land, Dallas Cowboy fan right here. All right, Dallas, New Jersey, my Texas. But that's right, Cowboy fan, Cowboy fan. That's right, that's right, that's right. Cowboy fans in heaven. That's good. <laughs> but I was raised in a little small state. Some people call it the armpit of, of America. I don't know why. Is the Garden State of Jersey? Anything from Jersey? For Jersey? For real? Jersey? That's right. See, small part of it. From Jersey. So if you guys have the accent a little bit, that's where it's from. It's from Jersey. It's from Jersey. Right there from New York and PA. But uh, that Jersey Shore, I don't know about that show. I don't know about that show. I don't know. I don't connect with it. But um, I'm glad to be here at Southern, 12 hours away. And Happy Valley. Happy Valley. Look around and all I see is trees, trees, and what? More trees. <laughs> City, so when I came down here, it was a shock to me. See, I've never seen so much cows in my life. And actually, I have, but not like here. Like, my, my parents are from El Salvador, Honduras. Any of you guys from there? Honduras, Salvador? No, okay. we're gonna have to mix that up a little bit. What is that a little bit? But um, glad to be here because, as my time here at Southern, I was able to get away from the city. Away from the city. And those of you who grew up and live in the city, especially the major cities, I was only about 20 minutes away from Philadelphia. Brother, no, I don't know where that came But, um, you know, to be out here in nature, to spend time with God is amazing. It's amazing. You know, to come out here, first of all, I came with myself out to Southern, and I'm from a close knit family, Latino family. On Sundays, you know, Domingos, it's time to get together do a little barbecue, go play some football. Not soccer, football. You know? It was Sundays with great days. I come out here and not many people around here like to play soccer. At least what I thought. When I came here, it was a whole different ball game. Love soccer. That was good. That was good. But the one element that was missing for me was the family. Family was big to me. Not able to have, I had nobody, I had no family. But it was great that I was able to find a family here in Christ. That was the wonderful part. That wherever we go, we will always have family. No matter what state, no matter what country, you'll always be home. And I, I praise God for that. And you know, as time grew out here, you know, I left my family, but I brought a little piece of me back here. That was my wife. And I finally got married a year later. I brought my wife back down. My wife Rosa, she here with me. And our seven and a half month boy. Seven and a half month boy. I think he's sleeping right now, but he's there. He's in our praise God every day for him. Because now my family now is growing here. My family's growing here. Not only the church, but my, you know, my blood family. But it's good. God has been good through all this time. And as, I, as we read the Bible, we find tons and tons of promises that Christ has And today I want to talk to you guys about them. 
about one of those wonderful promises that Christ gave us. But before, let's have a word of praise for the light and spirit of God give us today. Father God, in this, at this time, Lord, we just want to praise your name. We want to give you the honor and the glory all to you. You are the creator of everything that we see around us. And that today, on your day, the Sabbath, we ask that you bless our time here in, in the Bible, Lord. That the message that I bring, Lord, is not my message, it's yours. That the words that my, I speak be your words. And that today, we leave here filled with the Holy Spirit. Bless our time in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, once there a uh, story about a family who was awoken in the middle of the night by the smoke detector. And as they woke up, they realized their house was on fire. I hope nothing happened. Their house is in flames. So the dad, what happens is he gets up, he goes up to the children's room, he gets his five-year-old boy with the 18-month son to get him out of the house. They're going down the stairs when all of a sudden the, the five-year-old boy realized he left behind his favorite stuffed animal. So he runs back to the room to get it. Well, through all the confusion as the dad is walking outside, when he gets outside, he realizes the boy is no longer with him. And all of a sudden now he hears from the window, Daddy, Daddy, help me, help me. His son is trapped on the second floor. On the second floor. What to do? He can't go back in because the fire has now consumed the stairway. There's no way for him to go back up. There's fire, there's smoke everywhere. What to do in such a spot like that? In a moment, the father looks at his son at the second floor window. He just says, Andy, jump. And I will catch you. Second floor. Andy looks down and says, Daddy, I can't see you. I can't see you. How would you know you'll catch me? The dad just said, jump. Trust me. Now sometimes, for us, there's a, there's, there's a saying that goes that, we don't know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. Amen. And for us, it's sometimes it's worrisome to not know what the future holds for us. It's troublesome not knowing what we say in the Spanish, in Masaya, more than that. We don't know what's going to be tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen this afternoon. But we do know that God tells us not to worry. It's in His hands. But sometimes it's so hard, no? Sometimes it's so hard not knowing. You want to know what's going to happen. But you just can't. But God says, trust him. And one of the promises that Jesus left for us, as we go, one of the questions that you know, we answer, or we ask on a daily basis, is until when is Jesus coming back for us? Has anyone asked that question before? Has ever been in your mind before? Until when? Until when is everything going to come to an end? Do we live in a happy world? Do we live in a happy valley, but do we live in a happy world? I mean, every day, we around us on the news, we see suffering everywhere, not just here. Everywhere. People are not living happy lives. When you're getting thrown out of your house because you can't pay for it. Because you don't have dinner for tonight. You don't have a job to care of your family to find. You know, semester starting up and you don't have the money to finish off the last semester. It's worrisome. You know, hungry. You hear about war all the time. When is this going to end? Until when will this stop? And it, as we remember or we remind ourselves of the world we live in today, we must not forget that there's one time when the world was not like this. You guys remember when? When this world was not with all this beauty, there was no anger, no issues. There was one time God created the heavens and earth. Genesis 1 1. And he, what he made, he saw what? It was good. I said it was good. But what happened, my friends, to that world? What happened? For 
course, Freddie mentioned about the one guy who was in charge of the music, and his name was? Satan. What did he do? He rebelled. He rebelled because he wanted to be higher than God. And ever since then, this world that me and you live in has not been the same ever since. Has not been the same. And then what happens? In the Garden of Eden, perfect place, Adam and Eve, they're just chilling under a big tree. I like to consider a mango tree. I love mangoes, right? <laughs> He's just, they're just relaxing. All of a sudden, a little, little creature comes by now. Tricks them. Just tricks them into eating a fruit. Eating that one special mango God said not to. And they did. And after that, me and you haven't been the same ever since. We haven't been the same ever since that day. Ever since then, snakes and me don't get along. We just don't. I don't run, but I just. I don't pay no mind anymore. What happened then? Ever since that day, when sin has come in here, it's just messed everything up for us. Can you imagine that had that not occurred, you and I, where would we be in now? What, how would our world be now had that day not occurred? Oh, see, some people smile. They can imagine. They can imagine how our world would be totally different from then than it is now. But see, this story of sin and suffering, my friends, is that it started in the Garden of Eden. As they were deceived by that serpent. Every human being, you and I, are born into sin now and are condemned to what? To death. But praise God that there is a plan to put the end to all our suffering, all our pains today. All our worries one day will vanish. And, and we are offered today eternal life through Jesus Christ, Amen. our Savior. Amen. That's the one thing that we always must hold. And I just want to do a quick little Bible study. You're going to time me right here. Because I can go on. I can go on. So you time me. You let me know. You know. Little quick Bible study. Until when all of this is going to be done. But to know this, we need to know the promise. And I want us to go to our Bibles in John 14. Did we bring Bibles? Yes? Amen? John 14, 1 and 3. And I'm going to have you guys help me out here. Whoever finds it. John 14, 1 and 3. Just stand up and read it for me. 